Well, I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. The President of the General Assembly and the President of the Economic and Social Council. As we drift to the evening of another winter's day, let me extend my delegation's appreciation for the comprehensive briefing outlining the efforts to facilitate coherence in the work of the General Assembly and the Economic and Social Council and the opportunity to exchange views in a candid and transparent manner. The usefulness of these meetings are immeasurable. It leaves us, however, with another complex and engaging winter's tale. Excellencies, as we face the multifaceted challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has transcended all national boundaries. It is clear that the role of the United Nations is of pivotal importance. The pandemic has highlighted serious gaps in global cooperation and solidarity in COVID-19 recovery. Those gaps need to be addressed as of urgency and should not be left for another discussion at a future point in time. The distribution of the vaccines must be equitable and should not lend itself to be a topic of extensive debate. Sri Lanka, while supporting the extensive work carried out by the World Health Organization, reiterates the call of the UN Secretary General to make the COVID-19 vaccine a, go a global public good, free and accessible to all. It is also noted with appreciation that the fighting COVID-19 together cliche has been one of the priorities of the President of the General Assembly during the 75th session. Secondly, as regards financing for development, Sri Lanka emphasizes urgent need for increased international financing and moratorium on debt for developing countries at this time of an unprecedented crisis. Moreover, my delegation highlights the importance of a North-South cooperation for financing and supporting inclusive and sustainable development. Such cooperation needs to be mutually beneficial and in line with national priorities of the developing countries devoid of any conditions. Excellencies, whilst echoing the need to address the challenges faced by countries in special situations such as the LDCs, the LLDCs, and the SIDS, as suggested by many delegations. Excellencies, it is indispensable that the middle-income countries which face unique and diverse economic and social challenges intensified by the pandemic be given special attention and not be subsumed by the general classification as developing countries. Excellencies, to face all these challenges that confront us today, we need to ensure that we have a UN that has the resolve to respond appropriately. In this context, it is significant that we strengthen the role of the General Assembly and the ECOSOC as principal organs of the United Nations in its effectiveness and efficiency to fulfill its functions under the Charter. In this regard, we must hasten to make observation that there is substantial overlapping of subjects and functions which are replicated in several bodies, which leads to an uneconomical consumption of time, of UN resources and finance. An effort must be taken to avoid this phenomenon for a more effective management of resources. We have received the updates relating to the alignment process and the review of the ECOSOC, which clearly brings confirmation to the phenomenon that the same subjects are being repeatedly discussed in different bodies. We must also finally remind ourselves that this August Assembly, that at the turn of the century, that this August Assembly, that at the turn of the century, we carried over the Millennium Development Goals, which had not achieved half of its objectives, when we took upon obligations of the Sustainable Development Goals. It is not difficult to appreciate the challenges that small and medium economies had had to face in undertaking these laudable obligations. It is a little solace that the UN and its agencies would make available financial provisions to operationalize the implementation of the SGDs when most small countries were grappling with the fundamental issues of sustaining their populations 
with the basic facilities that would facilitate dignified living. Finally, we must therefore guard against a misalignment of the process in the context of the differentiated competencies that the member states might enjoy. You can be assured, Excellencies, and Mr. President, that Sri Lanka will provide the General Assembly and ICASOC our unconditional support and cooperation in achieving the 2030 agenda. I thank you. I thank the distinguished ambassador of Sri Lanka, and I would like to